Sweden has grown its economy at the same time as it has decreased its greenhouse gas emissions. Sweden has achieved sustainable growth. Or have we? Well, at least, that, at least that's the narrative that's being told all over the world. That sustainable growth is indeed possible, and all that other countries need to do is to follow in Sweden's footsteps. Let's uh, look at the numbers. What we see here, the green bars, that's GDP. This is indexed since 1993. The blue bars are greenhouse gas emissions. So this looks like an example of what's called absolute decoupling. That's when the economy grows, but the environmental effects decreases, in this case, greenhouse gas emissions. And to be clear, what's inside these blue bars are all the emissions from production in Sweden, uh, the food that we grow inside the country, and the fossil fuels that we burn inside Sweden. But is this the whole story? Are these all the emissions that we're responsible for? What about the flight I took earlier this year? Or the Danish steaks some of you eat? Or my cell phone and the way it was transported here? If you look at emissions from consumption, you can see that they're almost twice as high in Sweden as these production emissions. These full stacked bars represent all the consumption based emissions in Sweden. The blue ones are the emissions inside Sweden. And the orange ones, that's the ones that we import. So it's easy to see that emissions in Sweden has been decreasing <coughs> for quite some time. But the ones that we import are increasing. We're getting more and more emissions from abroad. And this is everything that we buy, everything that we consume, the planes we take, the food that we eat, but also things like construction materials for the houses that we build. What's not included is exports. So this is production plus import minus exports. Then you get what's called the consumption-based emissions. So some of our growth is not that sustainable after all. But why is this? Why are these orange bars not decreasing? Why are they increasing some years? Well, a large part of the answer is because we're getting richer and we're buying more and more things, a lot of them from other countries. And at the same time, the global emissions of greenhouse gases has been increasing for quite some time. The last years they're flattening out, flattening out which is uh, great news. But that is, is part of the answer. But another part of the story is the goals that Sweden have. We only have goals and targets for the blue bars. There's no ambitions, visions, or goals for the orange ones. The only goals that we have are to reduce emissions inside Sweden. And this is not unique for Sweden, by the way. I don't think there's any country that has goals like that. But it doesn't make it right. And to change this, I and others started something that's called the Climate Goal Initiative. That's 22 NGOs coming together for Sweden to add a goal to reduce these orange bars, to reduce the emissions also from imported consumption as well as consumption in Sweden. And among these NGOs are big environmental organizations like the Swedish chapters of WWF, Greenpeace, Friends of the Earth, Oxfam 2, but also organizations like the Swedish Association of Farmers, the Swedish Church, and the Swedish Association of Consumers. So it's a broad coalition coming together around this. And to be clear here, it's not about replacing our current goals. We still want to reduce all the emissions in Sweden. It's about complementing and adding on. And this is nothing that's just important for Sweden. All countries would benefit of having goals to reduce their environmental impact from consumption. Albeit a developing country like, say, Ethiopia, uh, who has very, very low consumption-based emissions, they would perhaps not have a target to reduce those in the near time, 
but rather to grow their consumption in such a sustainable way as possible. However, it's extra important with a goal like this for Sweden, and it's clear why when you see the numbers. The imported ones are so much higher than the, the ones inside the country. And if you added a goal like this, you'd also get rid of counterproductive incitements. If you only look at the, the production emissions, it could make sense to shut down factories, stop growing food in Sweden, in order to import these things, even if that doesn't reduce emissions. And to some extent, that is what's been happening with the Swedish food production. Adding a goal like this is also the fair thing to do. Why should we in Sweden be allowed to emit around 11 tons of greenhouse gases every year when the world's poor emit less than one ton? We are the ones that's rapidly eating up the world's remaining carbon budget. And if we were to reduce our consumption, there would be more room for the poor to increase theirs. And there's a third reason, and that's the most important one, for adding a goal like this. And that's because it would lower the global emissions. We are uniquely fit to reduce our own consumption emissions. And I'm going to tell you about four examples of how that can be done. First, you want to get people to consume less of extra carbon-intensive things. That's like taking flights, for example, or eating meat. And that can be done with uh, taxes. Did you know, for example, that in Sweden you don't pay VAT on international flights, and that flights are exempt from the carbon tax that we have on our fossil fuels? That needs to change. Second, we want people to choose the environmental option when there is one. Like, for example, choosing to insulate your house with cellulose instead of glass wool, or driving an electric car instead of a fossil fuel one. And this can be helped with subsidies, for example, tax reductions, and the like of it. A third thing is to get people to consume more quality products that last longer and can be repaired. It's much better for the environment if someone buys, say, an electric kettle for $100 and it lasts a lifetime, than if the same person buys 10 electric kettles for 10 or $15, but they have to be replaced every second or third year. Buy quality, cry once, as they say. But in this case, it's not only your own tears that you're saving. And this can be helped by longer warranty times, for example. If producers have to produce more quality products, they will do so, and that will reduce emissions. And here Sweden has done some things. We actually, the government announced that we're going to lower VAT rates on repairs quite recently. So that's a good example of uh, how it can be pushed forward. A fourth, we want to shift people's consumption patterns so they consume more of things that are environmentally friendly, like going to the theater instead of going to the mall, or taking a weekend at a nearby spa instead of going to London for the same weekend. And this can also be done with VAT differentiations, uh, shifting VAT rates, for example. Point is here, uh, these are things that China can't do for us. These are our opportunities, and it's our responsibilities. Gladly, some people have already taken the first step the city of uh, Gothenburg, for example, have implemented a consumption-based target. Their emissions can't be more than 3.5 ton per person by 2030. And that's in addition to the, their already set goals around the production emissions. And these things are also already being measured. Of course, it's a tricky thing to measure global trade and see what thing causes what where. But even if the, the numbers are a bit off by, say, 20 or 20, 10 or 20 percent, the trend is extremely clear, and we need to shift that trend. Some people say that neither the production nor the consumption perspective takes into account positive effects from relatively climate-smart exports. But it's actually enough just to stipulate that all the measures you take to reduce emissions must reduce them on a global scale. If you're strict on that, 
then you will also take into account all the positive effects that could happen from exports. So emissions, 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 emissions. Talking a lot about emissions here. But that's only one thing that's happening in a growing economy. We've also been seeing decreased biodiversity, cut down rainforests, depleted fish stocks, increased waste, increased pollutions. True sustainability and true sustainable growth needs to take all these things into account, as well as social factors. If true sustainable growth is a realistically achievable goal or not, this should probably be a topic for its own talk. However, I can recommend Tim Jackson's TED talk on that topic from 2010. In any case, it's very clear that social and ecological sustainability must be put in the first place. Whatever happens to GDP growth after that is of secondary concern. We need a human economy, an economy that takes care of all people, not just the top 10%, and not just the people living today, but also all the people in the future. A good first step towards the journey of this human economy would be to implement a goal to reduce the consumption emissions. We can measure them, we can do something about them, and people can relate to them in their daily life. We have a responsibility for the environmental effects we cause when we consume things. We don't have the full responsibility, it's shared with the ones who produce it. But nonetheless, we must take our part of, of the responsibility. All else is nothing but shameful. Thank you.